Greetings everyone, this is Elizabeth and I am back again with another um, go at the wall decals and stencils. At this point I don't know how the other video was going because I just literally put the wet canvas away and I wanted to start a new one because it's exciting. Um, this one, <laughs> uh oh. Oh, this is what happens when you don't clean the rim. Ooh. And the lid. Get a little... Um. <laughs> yeah. Somebody needs to clean their stuff. Holy moly. But, anyways. I digress. So. I have the 8x8 canvas from 5 Below. They're nothing spectacular. They do have a little warping in them. But you know what? They're fun. So we're going to take this fun and start with a little bit of gesso. And it's nothing fancy. I even have a little bit of black paint in this uh, brush. I don't particularly care because all of this is going to get painted again with my black. And the reason I'm doing a... You can use gesso. This one's an acrylic gesso. You can use white acrylic paint. I just want something to fill in some of these pores because I don't know what they pre-gessoed with. I don't know the quality of paint they used to cover the canvas and all that jazz. So I just want to make sure I've got a good base even on a crappy board because you know even though it's kind of not spectacular it's not an expensive canvas you can still turn around and sell these um, little prototypes as we will because if these turn out good you know I can sell them for a couple bucks and then turn around buy a nice canvas do the same technique and it would cost a little bit more the quality would be extremely different and the cost again would come from the substrate the canvas the board whatever I choose to go from I am doing a couple of trial runs because I just kind of want to see how these decals work how far <laughs> how far can I push them before I've totally ripped them um, you can see I'm starting I just went willy-nilly all over and moving it around I can see um, lines and stuff where I've been and there's a little white not glistening spot there so now I'm gonna smooth it all out I'm gonna start off the edge drag it across very light like if the wind blew this would fall right out of my hand nothing um, too strenuous I'm just going to go in and kind of go right over the top, apologies. I'm going to go in the same direction, but I'm going to flip this over so it's at the top. So I can hang on to this, so you can see what I'm doing. And right off the edge, start off the edge, finish off the edge. Okay, so there is my base coat of white. We're going to let this dry, I'm going to clean up, and then we'll be back with the black paint. All right, that didn't take very long. I hit it with the blow dryer after I cleaned everything up. Obviously, I didn't run down and wash my hands. Not too worried about it. Um, it's all nice and dry. Now, if this was an expensive canvas, I would pull out my expensive black paint. But I'm just going to use the black gesso. Yup. Both by Master's Touch. 40% off coupon if you can't wait or 50% off when they put Master's Touch stuff on sale at their 50% off. Um, the re I could have just done this with black gesso, but I wanted you to see the process. Use white gesso, then get your fancy black paint if you're doing a very nice canvas. I am just doing... Um, a test run, a prototype as we, we might say, 
um, to get this decal checked out. Now, even though it's a prototype, I still want it to look good. And as you can see, Gesso doesn't have a super um, fabulous coverage the first time around. So I am going to have to do this twice. Dip and go. I always do a little bit, go in multiple directions. Um, real painting, if you were actually painting a wall, you would take that roller up, you would bring it down, up and down, up and down. And you kind of just go in these crisscrossy motions. Well, you can apply that with your painting. And what it does is it helps to fill in those little white areas much faster. Just get a nice little flicking. Okay. Now, we're not worried that there's little... Um, gray areas because we have actually filled in all the holes it's just the paint is a little thinner in some of those areas and I'm not worrying about that right now I'm just gonna cover this board okay dip a little bit more than that though there we go up down left right okay if you can if you go this way it's gonna take you forever to fill it yes that's how I applied the white because I couldn't really see what I was doing. And sometimes you forget how to ride a bike, right? You're like, uh, what was I supposed to do? So crisscrossy motions fills it in much faster. Okay, I'm going to flip it over. I don't care. I'm just going to hang on to it just so we can see what's going on. Normally, you would just leave this on your... Uh, table there and just paint away but we want to make sure you can see everything get those filled in dipping tappity tappity and there's a bump right there okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in one direction with a little extra paint, maybe. This doesn't want to slide across this. It's all right. We'll get it going. That super thin layer dries really quick, and so it doesn't want to blend in with the rest. So now I'm just right off the board, okay? Start off the board, finish off the board. Start off the board, finish off the board. And you can tell it's filling in much better up there. Okay. Going to go in. Back and forth in the same direction. Get some color built up. Off the board, off the board. Even if you start over here, you're starting off and you're finishing off. Okay. And then if black will play a trick on you, it'll look like it's not covered, but it actually is. It's all about the lighting. And my lighting sucks. Sorry about that, but that's how it is. You spend a lot of money on the arty stuff, <laughs> the filming stuff came much later. And I originally had this phone holder slash ring light for uh, just taking pictures of my stuff to get the, for Instagram and stuff, which wasn't a ton. But as I'm progressing and doing more and more, I'm realizing I need to invest in a better camera stand, one that goes over the table instead of shooting out aiming this goosey neck isn't uh okay you're driving me nuts i may just have to dry it and go over it again i was hoping to avoid it but i'm not gonna be happy 
so I need to get a different stand for my camera, which I have one in my Amazon waiting to be purchased when I get the money. Okay. So I was trying to avoid a second coat. I'm just getting the sides right now, but I'm definitely going to need one. This, this is not the best gesso. Yeah, I mean, you get what you pay for. But also, I don't mind doing two coats. I do do a thin one to begin with because I like it to dry sometime today. <laughs> you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this coat. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to dry it with a blow dryer. And it's kind of like embossing powder but in reverse. It's wet looking and then as it dries, it looks dry. Okay. So I'm going to put my second coat on willy, you know, with the brushy back and forth kind of willy nilly and then I'm going to do a nice drag to uh, get some of the brush strokes out and uh, make it look a little more even and that's what I'm going to do for the second coat. So I'll be right back after that. Okay. Alrighty. So I did the second coat and I forgot to tell you. So if you do your first coat and you swipe this way, turn your board. So when you do the second coat, your first swipes are going one way, your second swipes are going the other way, and vice, keep going. So if you go to do another one, flip it. Each coat, turn your board so that when your final strokes go one way, the next time around they go the other way, okay? So I did hit this with the heat gun. It's all nice and dry. I pulled out a stencil. Um, this one is a Recollections stencil. It was a four pack with some, uh, I don't know, what was it with? Rubber stamps. Because I want to do this elephant, okay, but I thought instead of having just a plain background because I want to do the line of the elephant in a silver I have this silver pasty stuff it's like a glitter paste I don't want to use that one um, but I didn't want it just black right there so I was going to do a light um, hit and miss with some white now, what I mean by that is, we're going to open up the white one more time. We're going to grab our little paint brush. I'm going to give a little squirt of water right there on my board. Put that right in the water, and I'm going to just thin it out. Kind of like a little whitewash. I don't want it too bright. And I need to test how bright it is just gonna kind of see if I can see that that might be okay now this stencil I had ripped and so I just taped it and because I use it for mixed media it doesn't really matter um, even if I did a card so just because you rip them doesn't mean they're garbage just utilize a different area I have a feeling that's gonna be too much I don't want I don't want it fabulous I think I need to change my paintbrush here we go. We'll get one of my um, oil-based paint brushes. It's a little stiffer, so we can kind of just dab it in because I don't want it beautiful. I want it just kind of like hidden in the background, maybe. Is that too rough? And the best thing about painting like this is if you don't like it, you can just paint over it and do it again. Now there's some little flakes from the bristles of the brush because it's an old brush. And I think there's some flaking from the stencil lift. got a little too heavy right there I'm not too worried about it 
just rub it out I just want it not so fabulous and then I can also go back over it with some black if I need to cover that in so I'm gonna come over to this other corner do the same thing add some water loosen that back up Okay, that is just to chew. There we go. Soften that up. I'm just an old towel. Just soften that up a little bit. Nope. Okay. See? Had it too wet. It's not what we're going for. Ooh, but it cleaned up nice. but I don't like it. So I'm gonna get it wet and see if I can't wipe it off. Take a little bit of the black with it, but that's okay. Can I take that back a little bit? All right, see, clean that off. Let's try that again. That was a little too much water here and get a little bit more paint light swirly strokes just willy-nilly I just want to fill the corner more oh see that's much better there we go I'm gonna do the same Tap, 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 scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. They do have actual stencil brushes that are more bristly like this. But yeah, <laughs> if you don't have to buy it and you've got some stuff on hand, go for it. And like I said, these are an oil, oil paint brush. They're way stiffer because oil painting, you want to glob on the paint, kind of, and uh, do your fun designs that way. Oh, yeah, that's much better. And then we're going to just dab a little bit more. a little dark. Let's see if I can lighten that up. I'm going to take the towel right on top. Give it a nice little weep. Oh, it kind of blended it out. Oh, that's better. I'll just rub it off. Alright. Now, we can see that I have two brighter ones and two shadowier ones. So then... You can kind of just do a playing with how you want it to look. You know what? Do I want that? Yes, I do. I lied. We're not done. We're going to put a little bit of this stencil right in the middle. But I need it a little more runnier. Kind of blend over that one, blend over that one, get over the top of that one so they're kind of layered up. Something unique and different. Oh yeah, I like that. Get those high points off. So then we get a lot of different texture that way. Yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna clean those two, sort of. Put them in their bucket of water. Let that dry, not too worried about it. That is a water-based paint. Um, set this aside 
and I will wash it later. I used it upside down too, but that's okay. Now on our heart, we found that these five below multi-pack stencils, it was easier to, ooh, okay. Stay put. It's easier to pull off. I just want the outline, right? Yes. So I want all of the innards left. Okay, so there's the innards. This one is peeling up different than the heart did. Nope, okay. I need that tusk. Tusk to stay. OMG. It is so not letting go. I don't want to cut it, so I'm just getting a stylus to kind of help that along. Make sure gently run that stylus under this part of the stencil. Oh my goodness. This is why it doesn't cost that much because you got to do all the work. <laughs> and it's nice though because you can see the outline on the paper. So if you miss one, you can just kind of put it back. Stinking little tusk. See like right there, I missed this one. Popping off. Okay. Focus on these bigger ones for now. Oh, what a nightmare. Come off. Yeah, if you're not a weeder, this probably is not for you. Definitely got to have some patience pulling these off. Okay. Yeah, that worked great. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start on that side, which had... This one, tweezers, tweezers, it's by the tusk, no, where is that one, that's over here, let's kind of put it back. Now with this, doing it, putting all the pieces back, puzzling it back together, I'll be able to pick this up with a piece of uh, transfer tape for decals. If you have the Cricut stuff or another brand from another company, it's all the same. 
they're not picky. Okay. So then, let's get this. Okay, I'm going to piece this all back together and I'll be right back. Okay, we are put back together, sort of. Oops, I didn't see that guy got loose. Okay, anyways, I should have just left him there. Because I'm not going to use this. I just wanted to show for a demo. So, this is what you have. I've got two pieces here. I've got the big outline and then I've got the little bit that fills in this. This is how I want the elephant to look on there. All of this is going to be regular, um, but I want this all painted in. So I need, uh, OMG. Whew. So I want to peel this outline out. No, I don't. I want to leave that outline in. I need to put that outline back together because then we can use it as a we use it whole come on get back in your slot then I don't have to worry about staying in the lines because this will cover that for me so I'm just going to place it where I want it this is going to be fabulous I think okay so Ooh, I didn't notice that before. It says Shutterstock Image. Shutterstock.com. You can subscribe to them and buy images that you can use to reproduce and sell and stuff. But I'm a budgeter. I like free stuff or extremely cheap. So $5 for all of one. How many were there? Five. Five stencils that can do multiple things I'm yeah it's less than a dollar a stencil basically okay I need to get this top holding film off so I'm looking for to let me in spot let me in so what I did is I used my little tweezers and I just kind of shoved it into the edge until it made a little pocket for me. Okay, now here's the fun part. Just like regular decals and stuff, you're going to want to get that piece flipped over to the other side. And this is how I do mine. I don't know how other people do it, but this is what works for me. So it's kind of like peeling it onto itself and as you're peeling you're rubbing down making sure everything sticks because this is super low tack it's not like Cricut vinyl or uh, 143 vinyl okay you gotta help it stay put and this is so you can put it on your walls and then later take it off and it won't damage your walls if you got to move kind of thing I think so I'm my fingers are actually touching the board and pulling now my fingers are touching the glass mat and pulling I'm leaving no not pulling up like this I'm just pulling straight back okay oops and helping everything stay put go slow so if you see something catching you can go in there and rub it down. Maybe not that part, but there we go. This last little bit. I ran out of room. <laughs> okay. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Oh, hot dog. See what I mean by low tech? That shouldn't be peeling up. If this was permanent cricket vinyl or even regular vinyl it would be like sticking okay but we're gonna gently just peel these apart 
because it's a simple enough design we can just gently lay it back into place okay just gently lay it back into place oops as I say gently and rip it up okay we'll pull this up just a hair because it got a little loose lay it down okay now we're gonna search for some air bubbles okay and just follow in the directions of the line be gentle okay all right now here comes the fun part are we ready i'm excited oh this is gonna be fabulous okay i think i got it pretty good let's hope now this is some um, art c art copyright art c i don't know um made in germany i've had it for a while i leave these things on i got them on clearance at michael's one of the ones i bought was um all dried out but <laughs> when it got super hot up here it was like 110 in my attic and uh it uh reconstituted itself so that was nice okay so we're going to grab my Heidi, Heidi swap tool but before that I'm going to just give this a little stir because you can kind of see it separates a little bit but look at that it's still nice and creamy there's not very much I haven't used this very much but there's just not very much in the package to start with and it I don't know maybe it just dried out or I don't know it's gone but we're gonna maybe not that yeah maybe that tool and this tool we're gonna get it is that gonna be yeah that's gonna be good so I'm gonna take a little tool to scoop it out and then get it sorry I'm losing my hair as I get older my gray hairs fall out <laughs> okay we're just gonna smear that on there look at how shimmery that is okay and I'm gonna be very gentle I'm just gonna pull it across then I'm gonna come from another direction nope that's not gonna work okay Heidi swap tool sorry you leave too much paint on I didn't really want to use this little dinky thing but it looks like that's where nope I forgot it has a big big one of those maybe this will work a little bit better super gentle oh yeah look at that and this stuff does dry rather quickly I've found out Use my other tool to spread out that. I guess I should use my proper hand. But eh, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna just gently go across the whole thing and kind of even things out. Maybe. I say even and it leaves these god awful streakies. yeah no okay oh, okay we'll go this is kind of warped so now i flipped it over and see that that's better okay scrape that off into the jar because if we can save some of it right all right now I'm going to want to try and save this stencil. This kind of stuff is not meant for silk screens or your prized possession fancy delicate stencils. That stuff dries hard. Okay. Oh, I'm so nervous. 
because this is going to peel up in two sections, I think. Yep. I'm going to set that on top of that. Oh, it's really pretty, but dang it. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't one. So we're just going to gently peel that out. Oh, wow. Look at that. And it's got this little halo because the line where the main wasn't. Let's see if we can clean that out. Put a little water here. Oops, sorry. Don't mean to beat you up. I'm sorry if you can't hear me very well. I was really excited to do some videos today, but it is like hot see totsy up here. Mm. Okay, so that didn't clean up as well as I'd hoped. Maybe if I did a paper towel. And this little guy. Go at it this way. So if I were to do this again, I definitely need to be a little bit more cautious of that line. Clean off my edge right there where I went a little crazy. Hmm. What can I do about that? That's kind of kind of hideous right there. Let's see what I'm talking about. The paint kind of gooshed out right there. I think what I'll do is when it's dry, I'll paint over it with a little bit of white and black combo because you know you can see the stencil so I'll put that stencil back over it but isn't that just pretty and then for this this little halo I kind of like it so I think what I'll do is when it's all dry I'm gonna go in with maybe a gold and do a gold pinstripe around the edge and that gold pinstripe would also help hide this a little bit and take our eye away from there. But yeah, just aside from that uber uber goober, I kind of like this. I kind of like this little outline. So I think I'm definitely going to enhance that. Oh, I like that. But I got to clean my stencil. Um... I'll let this dry and touch it up and I will be back. Well, maybe I'll touch it up with you. So I'm going to put you on pause. Let this dry while I clean and hopefully salvage these stencils. All right. That didn't take very long. This stuff dries really quick, like super quick. I couldn't even get that off. Not even one speckle of it. I put it back together on the outside of the uh, transfer tape so the inside has the original cut pieces okay and I just set this on top so that I could peel it off and use it again um, I think it'll be fine like I said this stuff is not meant to be for it's not forgiving whatsoever but I pulled out some liquid leaf gold to see because I'm not sure how it's going to look or react to this board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a spot here on the back where I gooed it up a lot and I'm going to see how it's going to work with this board. Oh yeah, look at that. So I'm going to get a nice decent line with that. 
So I like that. Now, this liquid leaf, okay, you can get it pretty much anywhere, Amazon, craft stores, hobby stores. Um, it stinks. I'm not going to lie. It stinks. Um, if you know you're doing a huge project, well ventilated, air blowing and stuff, all that jazz. Now, it is like spray paint in a can, basically, which means you cannot clean it with water you cannot clean it with alcohol you have to clean it with um, like a turpentine paint thinner okay my paint thinner um, back in the day paint thinner was just a clear liquid this new paint thinner has a, it's kind of a white creamy color and so every time I clean a brush it adds color to it so it's no longer a white creamy it's a and it's not very stinky it's not the the yucky yucky kind it's the artist quality so it's not very stinky uh oh but I think I just was too abusive on my brush it was all sticking out so what I did it was like can I do it again it was all when it came out of there it was all crazy so I just pinched and rolled it back together okay see that N nothing fancy probably from the dollar store collection or some other cheap place not a big deal but what I need to do I almost forgot is I want to clean I want to clean up this mess that I have right here okay I want to see if I can clean that up and I'm gonna grab a teeny weeny brush I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna go over that first oops and it's nothing fancy so I'm gonna take it right out of the lid just a little teeny bit go right over any areas that I think are just too crazy Okay. just like that and I can see that I drug that out just a little too far when I was trying to clean it the first time so I got some shimmer specks there so I'm just gonna cover up any of the shimmer specks that I don't want and I can see that it kind of um, came through here a little bit too much. Okay, so you just kind of look around and see if you see anything that's really hideous. Great right here. That's all right not too bad but up here like right there is just too much of a spot now I'm not gonna go in with the white because I might actually sh cover that up with the gold when I go through but I definitely don't like that I hit way up here so I'm gonna just tap it off of there not super thick because we want it to dry super quick so we can go about our business and do more goodies with it okay and I'm just gonna fan it out a little kind of blur it in to my background all right gonna go get this little bit up here this little shimmers there we go all right that actually doesn't look too bad okay now I saw some spots um, up here that are kind of shallow so I'm gonna see 
if I can go in and uh, fix that up. So let me just clean up this little bit of black paint on this one. Clean, clean, clean. Okay. Now I'm pinching all the water out because I want this dry. I'm just going to pop this back open. Maybe. Come here. Okay. I'm just going to dab a little, I mean uber little on my brush. And gently back and forth to fill in that area. We don't want it raised up. We want it to blend in too much of a goober. Super duper teeny weeny strokes. And kind of blend your strokes out. Do a little tapping. Whatever it takes to fill that in and kind of be invisible at the same time is what you're going to do. Tap, tap, tap. Smooshy, smooshy, smooshy. Very nice. Very nice. And then I can see right here. Can you see that? Let me see. Yep, right there. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap. Might help if I had a little bit on there. Tap, tap, tap. Smooshy, smooshy, smooshy. Okay. Super light handed. Again, the wind could blow it out of your hand. Okay, and then that just fills that in. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to drop that in the water. Close this back up. And we're going to make some outline. Let's... Okay. Now, I'm a shaky person. Nothing wrong with it. Let me shake this up. Um, if you're working with gold leaf for long periods of time, every so often you're going to have to close it up, shake it up. Because it separates. It separates all of its goodness to the bottom. Now I'm going to dip and bring it up to the edge and roll it in the paint. So then it helps. Oh, like you could see that. Okay. So I'm going to go in and... Can we see that? <laughs> My thing's in the way. Okay, so we're gonna dip, go to the edge, and roll the paintbrush. Okay, and then pull up. And it's gonna give us this nice, come on, this super nice point on our paintbrush. So dip and roll. And then we're gonna come right down here I'm resting my hand on the table, resting um, my hand right here on the table, and I'm going to just gently make sure we can see. I'm just going to gently pull towards me, okay? And I'm going to, whatever makes you comfortable, okay? I'm going to gently, because I don't want it too thick. Just gently, gently, gently. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's going to look so good. A little flake from the opening. Dip. Roll across the side. If you want to use it like a pencil, just know it might be a little bit wider stroke. Oops. Dip. Dip. Tap and roll. Okay. Gently pull.
Now, if you don't tap the brush, you can get a different effect. Um, it kind of puddles in your line, which there's nothing wrong with that. It just is a different effect. So I didn't tap it off. I'm going to gently lay it next to there and pull. And you can see it's leaving like a little puddle behind. Okay. So where I started, I had more of a dry brush. So you're going to see the texture a little bit more through of the canvas. Okay. You can, if you don't like that look, you can do this or you can do a combination. So say like you did, you're working along and you're like, oh, I like this without the dipping off or the wiping off. So you just go right back over the top of it and just deposit more of that color right on top. Okay. And then you can mix and match it. You can do no dip or dip without wiping, a dip with wiping. But you just want to make sure because you can dip and pick up a big glob of paint. And we don't want that. We want this line super thin. That might be a good look on another project. But we're trying to keep it thin ish. Okay. So I'm going to go around the rest of this. And I will show you what it looks like in the end. And whatever technique, you know, if you're a, a pull or a push with your paintbrush, nobody's going to know, honest. We'll get right back with you in just a momento. All right, so I got the gold outline in and realized <laughs> when I got over here, I didn't have enough of that line. So I kind of just eyeballed it and made my own which left this guy a little short so we're gonna just go in there and do another touch up and see how we had added that black in there but by putting that gold over it it hid the fact we had that boo-boo so now you'll never know well we will know but you know what I mean so I'm just going to come in because this one kind of follows along this line. So I'm going to add a little bit of that there. Come up. And just kind of straighten that out. Maybe. Just get. Ooh, that looks a little chunky. I don't want you. Go. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to follow that little point, gently pull into the right direction, elongate that side just a hair because I went kind of wild on that side with the, the gold. It's a little wide and that's fine. I mean you make a boo-boo, you just kind of blend it in. elongate that side just a hair there we go and ta-da I think we have a finished product oh yeah and I went in and added a touch of gold to the eyes and I just think it makes it pop a little bit more clean my fingers here. I'm going to pull you back and stand this up. Maybe. Okay, I guess we'll have to do that kind of zoomy. But look at that. Try and adjust this light so we can see. Ooh! Come on! this particular zoom I wonder if my I got to clean my lens might be a little dirty 
but a nice little eight by eight little art project that we finished today mainly a test run to see how it would look and I think it will look fabulous on a real canvas hanging up I will I think I'm gonna let it dry and uh, add it to my list of things to sell but I just see how that stencil just pops through the back I just think that's awesome and you could do this um, think outside the box yeah they're showing you it as wall art card or wooden art you know slab this on a piece of wood go that route but you know this is eight an eight by eight okay which means let me find a piece of scrap of paper a whole room full of craft stuff and I do not have a scrap piece of paper nope they're not the right size okay right is this the right size is this a what is this that's a five okay so this is a five by seven sheet of paper okay Look how much of that elephant fits. Oh, you can't see. Okay, I'm trying not to touch it. And so you could easily. Well, let's show you. Let's show you real quick. I mean, that's all dry, right? So you buy this. We've used it on a major craft. Okay. we're annoyed that we have to peel it again <laughs> but we'll get it off now if it loses its stick it's a stencil granted it's a flimsy stencil but uh pixie spray so here's your your card panel five by seven okay we're gonna put this down just like so because you don't have to have the whole thing on there. Just enough so that somebody can say it's an elephant, right? Maybe we can go up because we have so much trunk. No, I like it like, yeah. Do we want to go up? And see, that's the other thing. You've got choices. And see, it's low tack, so it's peeling right back off. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Oh, yeah. So we're going to come up. We're going to have that tusker right there okay now this is going to be fun because we're going to grab our ink blending brush the ginormica one and see how I work right through the mess because I don't care Ooh, do I? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm going to go dark to light. So we're going to do the light one with that one. And we're going to do the dark one with this one. Let's get a clean spot. This is just regular Nina um, cardstock. I think it's either Nina or the Park Lane not so white white cardstock. <laughs> Oops, stay put. And I'm not doing fabulous. I mean, this is just a sample so you guys can see, okay? Now, I did the outside dark blue, so I'm going to flip it and just kind of change it up and do this part of the elephant and kind of reverse. Okay. Get some ink in there, and then I'm going to come in with the light blue. Get a little clean spot. Go in. And 
not really caring how you know it goes down per se because we're just playing having some fun throw some color in there okay so we've got that going on so when we peel it we have this beautiful white almost diamondy effect just be careful when you're peeling okay and then we can set that right back where we got it and I just made a card panel so even though it's meant for something else adapt it to what you need so say like this was super sticky I think it was probably way more stickier since I've been using it it's lost the stick um, defuzz it tap it on a towel tap it on your jeans get some of that fuzz out but yeah water reactive okay towel get some of that off now we've had a texture isn't that pretty mm -mm -mm. the things we could do which yeah well mine as well right you're here Get a little bit of your white paint. Gonna take some out. Get some white paint right there. Get it nice and juicy. Make some splashes. Maybe, come on. There we go. Ooh, that was neat. It kind of gave a flinger. It's not the best paintbrush to do this with. But now we've just made a mixed media, sort of. <laughs> kind of like a little galaxy. Night sky. Maybe a little shooting star. Okay. So go out there. Get your fingers dirty. And make something crafty. Have fun, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.